Hello, good afternoon everybody and welcome to another Art for All group on a slightly rainy Tuesday afternoon. So in this Art for All session I'd like to focus on an artist um, specifically to celebrate Black History Month and the artist I'd like to focus on uh, won the Turner Prize in 2017 and her name is Lubaina Himid and she is the first black woman to win the Turner Prize and she's also the oldest person to win the Turner Prize. She won it when she was 63. Um, so her contribution to the art world has been about breaking down barriers. It's been about showcasing voices and people who historically haven't been heard from. And she did this in response to being black, growing up in Britain. She was born in Zanzibar but moved to Britain as a child. Uh, what it means to be black and British. And I think somebody once said to her, black people don't make art. And I think what we're going to see in the next couple of minutes is that clearly they do. Um, and her artwork is both beautiful and thought provoking. So I will share my screen so that you can see it too. And I'd like to focus on one particular artwork um, by Lubana um called Naming the Money. And this was a piece that she created in 2004. And she's primarily known as a painter, uh, but these, the artworks in this piece, um, they could be interpreted as sculpture, but I think she's quite clear that she sees them as being paintings. So it's the largest installation that she's created. She makes cutouts, so these are life-sized cutouts of human figures. And... They're freestanding shaped boards that allow the viewers to walk around and interact with them. So you can see here, this is a detail from the catalogue of the exhibition. And all of the figures here, there are a hundred figures, and they are all taken from portraits of wealthy white Europeans in Renaissance and classical portraits and often people would have as a show of status they would have their slaves or servants next to them in the pictures as kind of accessories in a way, a way to show their status and these people next to the, the subjects of the portraits often their names might not be included in the portrait or the name that they were given in the portrait would not be the name that they were born with. And I think Hamid thinks about the fact that these people were bought and sold, the fact that actually what, they, what their trade was, the way they were valuable to their employers, might be listed underneath the portrait. And to think about what the job was that they were doing for their employer or slave slave master um, and what their actual passion was, what their actual job was. So there are a hundred figures, so there are ten toy makers, ten musicians, uh, so viol de gamba players, uh, ten um, maids, um, ten ceramicists, ten herbalists, ten dog trainers, 10 dancers, 10 map makers and 10 painters and a few other uh, trades in there as well. So these would be people who had been told, right, you're going to be, you're going to be doing this now, this is your role now, kind of whether you like it or not. But what Himid thinks about is what these people have been told to do and who they actually might have been as people. So doing research into the background of paintings and trying to find people's real names and to think about where money 
intersects with power and control and also people's own agency, people's own imagination. And all of these people, even though these cutouts, even though they're drawn from kind of these portraits that make them into a homogenous entity, she's painted them all as individuals. She's found their names, she's given them their names and has added has added part of what makes them individual into their description of themselves. So these are made with collage, they're made with paint, um, and they also have audio tracks that go along with them. So here's an example of the portraits that the figures were taken from. So people, black people alongside the subject of the portraits in the middle. And Himid says, it's easy to see why you want to know about my cutouts, but really difficult to explain why I make them. I know what they are, history paintings, portraits, political treatises, stand-ins, adverts and effigies. I know what they are not, sculpture. I've made more than 200 of them in the past 30 years, 100 in the past year alone. And even though these are more freestanding than they have ever been before, they are paintings. So Himid is quite clear that these are not sculptures, they are paintings, they are very the sort of boards almost I suppose what it reminds me of is almost kind of uh, Victorian sort of miniature theatres where scenery would be pushed on and off and things would drop down these tableaus being made up and the interaction actually between all these different cutouts creating community creating something wider individuals within a wider system of slavery and oppression but also individuals being creative and making connections and being part of a community that isn't about just oppression it's also about identity and agency so taking some of the power back take saying this is what we are this is what people were and now moving forward so here you can see some details of the collage and the way that actually everyone, every figure in the room looks actually very different. And I think sometimes, especially in the world at the moment, it can be very easy and reassuring to see different political groups, different racial groups as, oh, they all, people are all like this, all those people do that, all these people do this and not to see the individuals and not to see the nuance to split things into black and white and not to see the grey areas and I think Himid cuts through that really really succinctly with this to say yes there's this what we're thinking about here is a huge thing there all of these people here were oppressed are, have been oppressed, are oppressed, but they're also, they're not just this big group of people, they are these individuals with names. And so she lists their names. For an example, my name is Nakati. They call me John. I used to make masks. Now my shoes are worn by kings, but I have the cutter. My name is Walukaga. They call me Sam. I used to chase wild boar. Now the dogs do it for me and they have the meat. So it's almost like poetry. You have the person's name, the real name. You have what they call the person. You have their occupation that they used to have. The occupation they have now and you also have the way, for some of the figures, but I love the mud, but I have the colour, but I have my music. These, these elements that bring them back to themselves. What do they value in life? What do they, what, what, is, what is it that's, that's there for them? That they take even from 
something that is not of their choosing, that brings them back to them. And for other people, there's maybe a hint of sadness, so the dogs hunt the boar and they have the meat. What is this person left with? So there's some, and some of the figures turn things into a positive, some of the figures, it's more ambiguous. Somebody says, I used to have six drums, now I borrow these, and it takes some skill. There's also an acknowledging of a person's talent. All of these people are artists. Artists and counsellors, people who have to get along well with people and create beautiful things. And finding ways to do that even very difficult circumstances. You can see more of the people here. And Hibid describes the work as the point I am often exploring vis-a-vis -vis the black experience is that of being so very visible and different in the white western everyday yet so invisible and disregarded in the cultural, historical political or economic record or history. And I suppose normally in art videos, every Tuesday I might give an art activity. And I was thinking about, I'm white, I'm talking about Black History Month. In terms of an art activity, what, what am I going, what, what would I tell people to do? What would I, make or and I think I found that difficult to think about but then actually looking at Himid's work I thought maybe what it is about is going back to the very beginning of what art making is and art making is about looking it starts off with looking and not just in terms of actually visually seeing things but looking taking things in maybe is that that is the, the better way of describing it taking things in so whether you're able to see with your eyes or to take things in in other ways through hearing through knowledge and he made describes the visible and the invisible so at once people seeing somebody because of their color of the, the color of their skin as very different from what white britain is so people are different and they stand out but they're also not represented as much in the culture and art that we see around us in some areas more than others and it's changing but I think Himid described her win of the Turner Prize as bittersweet because so many black female artists had come before her and had not won. And finally she did in 2017, which was only three years ago. So change is happening, more change needs to happen. And maybe the, the activity I'd ask people to do after this video is to, is to look and observe around us and to see and it's actually, I suppose, the difficulty, seeing what's not there, what's not there in our communities, in our artwork, in the spaces that we're in, whether that's indoors or outdoors. And it really reminded me of the film, some of you might have seen, called um, Hidden Figures. So the figures that made um, the people, the women who worked as computers in NASA, black women, who made space flights possible and their stories weren't known. So th thinking about the stories that aren't told, the names we don't know, the faces we don't see, the representation that isn't there. And it's true, this is Black History Month, so I'd like to focus on the experience of black British people within the arts, but as an aside, thinking about disability and so people with disabilities, people
people from the other black and minority ethnic backgrounds, um, people who are, have experienced oppression and stigmatisation in different ways, looking at the artwork around us and particularly public buildings and there's been some debate over this summer about um, the tearing down of statues of former slave owners um, but with that in mind I thought I thought actually about the hidden figures who's represented and who isn't represented and I found the interesting figure that according to the to research conducted by BBC journalists in June 2020 there are approximately 15 outdoor statues of named black individuals in the UK. 15. And it made me think of Hamid's figures who aren't statues but who are cutouts. And they all have names but they're not statues. So there's maybe, it, it, made, it just made me think about the contrast. So to point out, this doesn't include statues that are indoors or unnamed statues like the Brixton Platform Project. And these were the first outdoor statues erected of black British people. They were installed at Brixton Station in 1986. So thinking about looking at the world around us, thinking about who's there, who's not there, and who we would like to be there. And thinking about maybe art occupying new spaces. These are Hamid's works in the V&A. And the contrast is something that's beautiful. And the inclusion and the change. So thank you very much for listening today. And I hope that the rest of your weeks go smoothly. And I hope that you get a chance to go around outside, inside and to look and observe and see what's there, what's not there, and just to dig a bit deeper to find out the full story. And I hope you find it interesting. So, all the very best. Thank you for joining. Goodbye.